Hi everyone, Ingrid Jensen here with our amazing exploration through my life of materials. Uh, let's see, how can I start here? Teaching and standardized materials that everyone should have. It depends on your instrument. I'm going to definitely do a pile of trumpet things towards the end of this, so we'll do a general music, improv, rhythm, dig deep dive into using our ears, uh, explanation of materials that I am obsessed with and continue to dig into and learn from. Uh, the ears, the ears are everything. My number one resource over my entire life has been taking my horn in my hands or sitting at the piano exploring sounds. Um, taking my horn in my hands and playing along with things, doing the same thing on the piano, transcribing, finding the harmony, the melody, the rhythm of the song that I'm trying to learn. So if you're not ready to jump into all the materials yet because you haven't put in time just learning tunes and learning the language and using your ears as much as possible, do that first. Books are only going to cause stress and tension and make you think too much, which is why I have a blank piece of paper. My very first thing I want to have with me is this scrap paper so I can say, huh, don't overthink. Don't overthink, Ingrid. Dig in. So whatever you need to clear your mind with as far as having resources around you, a simple pen and paper and a book of manuscript and a pencil to jot down ideas. Those are some of my definite go-to favorites. And I have pages of notes of things that I'll throw in the garbage. I have ideas in the manuscript book that I'll chuck in the garbage too. But let's talk about the materials that I use as a go-to, the the tools, the tools as it were. Yeah, a metronome, definitely. That time is more accurate than my time. Whatever I choose to practice with that will call me out on what needs to be worked on. So the metronome, marry the metronome as George Garzon said. Um, the drone, the drone, is similar to a piano in so many ways. It's just a constant note that's hopefully in tune. Now this melodica, I'm going to find a note on the melodica just to, to prove my point of how, how I want to not prove a point. How I want to not be trying to reach this perfect state of making music when I when I start practicing or when I start working on something. I just want to be in the moment and see where I'm at. So I recommend the same to everyone else. So I take a breath, I check in. I breathe out. F sharp. I connect with a note. Something as simple as a melodica could lead me to hanging out with a melodica could lead me to a whole tune writing a tune and taking that same feeling to my trumpet where it feels like this organic release. So if I'm hearing this note, it's a good, a good tool. It gets my ears and my body just hearing one note. Hey, it is an F sharp or a G flat. Um, how much ear training is involved in that moment? Enough to let me know that it's a minor third and I don't have to think about what the next note is. It's an A, but it's... Then the reference to the tune, the language you have internalized, that I have internalized, the melodies, the rhythm, the harmony, becomes... It, it sits in a place where it's free to start roaming and start giving me ideas and feeding me ideas when I improvise. So some of the resources, books I think everyone should have, or at least forms of study everyone should dig into. Without it, you're probably, there's probably going to be some holes in your learning. The Raga Guide, this is just on top because it's the smallest book. But the Raga Guide is amazing within this whole Indian music tradition, which I know very, very little of, but I'm slowly putting myself in a position to learn, um, are many modes and many ways of 
digging deep into the study of Indian classical music. These things relate. Jazz Harmony, Andy Jaffe, another great book. I'll make a list of these and make sure that they, um, they all get shared properly with all of you. So Jazz Harmony, Andy Jaffe, Advanced Music. Excellent exercises, inspiring ways of discussing the music, correct chords, correct melodies, and very clear, very beautifully done. The Jazz Piano Book, you can kind of tell I've, I've used this one a little bit too. Getting my piano chops together is a lifelong goal and having the freedom to find my ideas when I sit at the piano is my ultimate space to be in. Therefore, Bach, two and three part inventions. Oh, my daughter put, I love jazz. Corinna was here. Um, Bach, two part inventions. Two and three part inventions, excuse me. I cannot play the three part ones, but there's a few that I can play the two part inventions on the piano. And every time I do, I feel like a deeper connection to counterpoint has been unearthed. Bella Bartok, Microcosmos. Uh, all of these are incredible. Even if you can't play them on the piano or on your secondary instrument, if it is piano, you can learn from them by just looking at them, analyzing them as a score, finding ways to, to put harmony in, in the context of jazz onto those pieces and just you know, go for go for some compositional thought that is is definitely relating to monk for one for sure many other of our our wonderful jazz masters that we have listened to over the years have checked out Bartok modus novus another great one the ear ear train sing play Compose. I use, I use this book in a number of ways. Definitely for, for really checking in and seeing if I'm able to even sing any of it. But also to, to really just find inspiration from various melody lines, directions of intervals, the way they land and the way they move, and then applying them as well to harmony. Finding chords, creating a bass line from the melody and and developing that. I could go on for hours on those on that book. I just love it. Um, let's get into vocabulary. Learn to play jazz. John McNeil's Learn to Play Jazz. This is a fabulous book, especially for beginners, people who are just starting out and learning their modes and getting into simple short form soloing and um, and and really, really getting a deep understanding of harmony. It's a fantastic book. Becoming an Improviser, another one. They're great. The play-alongs are good. You don't necessarily have to even use them. The exercises are clear. The videos are fabulous. Here's another one, Forward Motion. Cannot say enough about how great this book is. Hal Galper from Bach to Bebop. Moving your ideas forward. Forward, mo forward, mo <laughs> forward motion is everything. It's really, it's Coltrane, it's, it's Bird, it, you know, it's Bud Powell. Having that idea to create an idea, create a line or a thought that moves forward rather than starting on a heavy beat. That's the best I can explain that book in its very fundamental form. It's much more involved and extremely inspiring. Thesaurus of Scales and Melodic Patterns, Nicholas Slonimsky. Another book I feel completely unqualified to own, um, as I have only probably gotten through the first 15 pages, and that alone has made me a better trumpet player and able to hear and navigate through incredible linear concepts that take me out of my comfort zone of just playing a major scale or playing off of the modes of the melodic minor scale. It takes you somewhere else. Ooh, can't live without this. Chorales by Johann Sebastian Bach. Playing some chorales, singing chorales, analyzing chorales, digging into them. Here's some more Bach. Haven't played that, just found that one upstairs and I'll be hitting it soon. Um, collected scores, Kenny Wheeler. I'm sorry, Collected Works on ECM by Kenny Wheeler, edited by Fred Stern. 
analyzing scores is a whole other ball of wax when it comes to discovering how this music works. So studying scores is huge. Anywhere you can do that, there's so much available online, but if you could go to a library and pull out a bunch of scores and start studying them, really dig into the way the composer was thinking. Speaking of composers, Rogers and Hart, the original, like the original chords from these standards that have somehow made their way into certain publish publications that are not so accurate. Be careful. It's like words. Words have meaning and they have consequence. And so do the incorrect chords and melodies and verses that are not included on so many tunes. So learning the verse, I learned the verses of the tunes, the, you know, the part that happens before the tune, before my honey, honey Valentine, there's a verse. Because my mom, when I grew up, had the old lead sheets and they were amazing. The original lead sheets from back in the day. So that's the non-trumpet part. And here's the trumpet part. Oh, look, more John McNeil. How many copies of this book do I have? <laughs> the Art of Jazz Trumpet. This book helped me so much in my early career days or pre-career days when I was really struggling with getting flexibility and dexterity on my instrument. And the Art of Jazz Trumpet, those are like, that's four copies through the different publications, uh, the different versions he's put out. Amazing. Let's see what else. Etudes. Trumpet players need to take, play etudes. At least I do. I love playing etudes. They make me better. But at the same time, my old B-flat Charlie Parker real book, which I am initially bought to check my transcriptions and to, to check in and see how close they were because this book is quite accurate. Um, but also now I'll pick it up and play these as if they're etudes. Just try to get through them and play them as, as perfectly and as flawlessly as I can. No different than if I were to play Pierre Charlier, 32 etudes. De perfectionment. I apologize for my terrible French. But, yeah. Etude books. Flow Studies. Chickowitz. Vincent Chickowitz. These are fabulous books because Mark Doolin and Michael Chickowitz put so much care into interviewing the students who studied with this great master teacher and also did a separate book with the exercises that are nice and clear. You can really get a lot from them. Um, let's see, there's another book I'm forgetting here, but there's not really a book for it. And that would be, there is a book, but the book that I learned was the in-person lessons with the great Lori Frank. And she put a book out with John McNeil called Flexus, and it's a fabulous one as well. And I left it upstairs in my office. But that's one I would say is is really great to check out. Um, keeping in mind that each person Lori Frank taught, the great Lori Frank, the guru of trumpet teaching, she taught differently. So using all of these materials, Clark studies, Arban, Bish. The, I could bring another stack down here, but we don't need that. We just need to know that we should be working out of books and papers that inspire and make us better, not that make us feel worse about ourselves or like we can't do the material because we aren't equipped. So whatever that may be, um, back to basics is always where I end up going, and that's checking in on my ears, my time. Letting the materials that I surround myself with be the band. They come the feeling of playing live with someone else. So this is where the biggest tool of all, I would be remiss to not mention, is our imagination and our creativity as well. And allowing our ears 
to take us on whatever journey it is while we work through this moment of developing our technique. Thank you.